are doing our book club series, chapter four today. Chapter four of The Primal Wound. So if you haven't purchased this yet, be sure to go on our website, ColumbianInfluence.com, under resources, go to our bookshop, and buy the book. C-O-L-O-M-B-I-N. I'm going to spell all day or day. Um, <laughs> today we're going to be covering chapter four. Uh, which is titled Loss and the Mourning Process. So I know that feels very daunting. It does. <laughs> feels dark. Like, woo. Like, what a way to start the episode. Just like Loss and the Mourning Process. Like, that feels heavy. But we're going to go into it a little bit more and just kind of discuss, uh, you know, again, as we've kind of been doing, discuss the parts of the chapter that stuck out to us most um, and just kind of give you guys the gist of what we felt during this particular chapter. So um let's dive in i suppose let's do it i think you started off okay let's see so the chapters uh, actually for me it was right off the bat (laughs) so the beginning of the chapter the first section is the need to mourn um and basically for me there was one quote that stuck out for me on this one um was basically stating yet for a child absence and death may amount to the same thing and the memory of the loss of the original mother may be imprinted in the psych- in his psyche and the cells. I don't really know if I'm going to go into this much at this moment. That was just, like, that kind of, for me, gave a very good introduction to the whole chapter. I agree. I literally almost highlighted. I should have just highlighted the whole paragraph. <laughs> you might as well. <laughs> I left it, like, two sentences. entirely blue, just <laughs> so you guys know. You can't see it, but <laughs> first paragraph is is a lot um that's all that i kind of and again like we we discussed this in chapter three was that we are highlighting differently than we did the first time with different colors and mine last time there's very little black pen there's a lot more purple so there's a lot more that i came out of it from this particular one um but that i think is a good way to preface this is you know again the memory of the loss of the original mother may be imprinted on in their psyche and the cells so that's how we'll kind of start with that um what was the next section was that the next one i almost have stuff on every section like not a lot but just brief things okay so i I almost want to touch on it um yeah go for it the acknowledged to attempt to grieve i think in this one little part that stuck out to me is because few adoptive parents realize that their baby is experiencing loss Mm. they do nothing to acknowledge that loss or empathize with it i I think that that is really significant. Um, that's why I like really want to push, a, like hopeful adoptive parents, especially to read this book. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's like it's doing them a disservice by not reading this. Yeah, book. my mom's like, I need to read this. I need yeah. to read this. I'm like, I'll give you my book after. Like, or I mean, you could support us on our, cool on our research. Research. <laughs> research. Yeah. bookshop. All of it. Go now. Yeah. No. Honestly, it's like everything. Everything with this, and I think that kind of puts it into a bite sized portion of it. Is just that. There's very little to acknowledge that. I think for me personally, there was, and I can't remember which episode we touched on this. It may have been the interview with my parents, was that um, there was a very big difference in my parents raising me versus my sister. And my aunt actually said to my mom, like, well, you got a real baby this time. Because my sister was so easy as a baby. Like, she was so chill and whatever. And then I was just screaming all the time. (laughs) Is anybody surprised? No. Um, (laughs) But it, she always, like, used to go to my crib at night and, like, I would just be wailing. She would put her hand on my back, stand there for way too long, probably. And the second she thought I was asleep, she'd lift her hand and I'd be like, Meh! And then she'd put it back and be like, I guess I'll stay. And I think, like, that, to me, seems like kind of the acknowledgement to a, to a certain extent as far as acknowledging that I was different in that yeah. way. And I don't know if it's necessarily that, I don't know if she, like, thought of it that way necessarily, but she did identify the fact that my sister and I were different in to some capacity. Um, but, I mean, I think you and I are, you know, even you and I are different, and so there's going to be a lot of differences in how people experience raising kids yes. and that are adopted, and there needs to be more acknowledgement when it comes to that. For sure. It's it's not talked about enough. No, not at all. Was there more that you kind of got from that besides just like wanting no, to No, I think it? that little part was just like, wow, I think adoptive parents really need to do their part first before mm-hmm. 
kind of going through the journey with us because it is, you know, as much as this podcast is about our voices and who right. we are and adoptees and hearing what their stories are, adoptive parents play a huge role in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is what it is. I know, you know, we don't give them enough credit. I, they go through a lot too. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to touch too much on it because I don't know the perspective as adoptive parent either. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it just really was interesting to me that even as a baby, we were experiencing the loss. And mm-hmm. as an as a parent, you're just so excited for a new baby, you know, all of this. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't think about that. I know for a fact they didn't think about that. Right. So that was just really interesting to me. Right. For that particular section, um, let's see. I guess for that I had a couple things underlined. There's not really a lot that kind of sticks out, um, besides just like the end of this section just mentions the compulsion for many adult adoptees to reconnect with the biological mother and saying that that's a normal response because of this. And that kind of just touches on everything that we've kind of stated before, especially yeah. chapter three going into this. Um, there's a lot that comes from that. Uh, and of course this whole chapter is about the mourning process and I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm feeling this going in, you know, being five minutes into this episode and we're like, how do we talk? Like, I don't know. I guess I'm not, I'm feeling like it, it feels very similarly to reading it where I'm like, what do we say about it? You know, like, how do you, it's kind of like the uncomfortable, you know, essence of talking to someone about a loss that, you know, I feel like that's what I got reading this whole chapter. And like, we're kind of jumping to the end right now where we're talking (laughs) about the whole, you know, how we felt uh, after the chapter as a whole, but it is really just like it's very weird and hypothetical. Yeah. Talking about a loss in such yeah. a hypothetical way is so abstract I know. and bizarre. So it's <laughs> forgive us if there's a lot of like pauses in pauses in this particular chapter, just because I think it's a lot for us to digest and like you know, we have things underlined we have things highlighted we have notes we have quotes and everything but it still just doesn't necessarily always make sense to speak upon so we'll kind of do our best i don't know and again everyone's going to process this completely differently right right so with anything that we do say or you know any commentary on our end obviously like leave us comments we want to continue the discussion completely you know as far as everybody goes as far as in the um adoption community like that's why we're here um, so, okay, so basically going through this, I didn't have anything from the stages of grief. I mean, that was just kind of like, okay. I just thought it was really <laughs> interesting. Like, you don't think about a baby grieving. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think people even think that when it comes to, like, a baby that's around their grandparent a lot. You wouldn't think about them grieving when they've yeah. lost someone. I know. So, like, I just thought the stages were very interesting. I'm not going to go into it either, but it was just like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. That makes sense. So, the next section, let's see, defending against further loss. Um, I mean, a lot of this chapter, both being the defending against further loss and the psychosomatic response to loss... Basically, a lot of this kind of goes into, I think, like, the child reverting to a defense mechanism when it comes to that bond and having that issue with, like, making that bond with the parent. So that's kind of what I got from that. Um, The psychosomatic response to loss, however, like, that fits me to a T. Like, that's something that really holds true to me. Um... Basically, this section is discussing uh, many adoptees spontaneously mentioned having some kind of chronic illness as children, which often persisted into adulthood. The symptoms mentioned including stomach aches, chronic headaches or migraines, allergies or asthma, chronic fatigue, immune deficiency, eczema, hives, ticks, or stuttering. And not all of those ring true to me, but I mean, a lot of people, quite a few of them do. And also just things that I'm still dealing with uh, as an adult. And I'd mentioned this in a previous chapter as well as that I worked with a uh, neurologist more recently that has discussed like my, my cells specifically and their ability to, 
you know, absorb nutrients, fight things off. And just the fact that my mitochondria is not up to par. <laughs> so, I mean, there's that. But it's just, like, that kind of thing with having, like, this whole chapter or this section of it is discussing certain adoptees and their experiences with physical things. And, like, I've always, I don't know, back in, I think it was high school, um, I had a friend that was going through something really difficult and I had, like, sympathy pains and I was having, like, yeah. really bad stomach aches because of it. And it's, like, yeah. things like that. And I've always had, like, little things come up that are due to stress and it's just, like, my body takes me down. And I think it's literally, just, literally, yeah. I'm going to detail. You but know that, I yeah. I've been there and saw that. Yeah, exactly. Completely. So it's like, which we'll do. We want to do something regarding adoption and you mental know health, health and... mental health, physical health, all yes. of that because I'm good with getting it on the table and just kind of putting it all out there. Um, but yeah, this is all like one of the quotes here that I have is that all of these responses may be seen as a result of anxiety. An anxiety which, for adoptees, may be caused by the unconscious fear of another abandonment and the deprivation of food or nurturing. I mean, that's just, like, that's, again, just, like, your survival skills and, like, right. trauma responses and everything like that. And kind of jumping back to the page before, I wrote, like... Do you feel like you identified with that more as a kid, or do you still like like is it the separation thing now still? I, I mean, go into this as much or little as you want, but I don't think it's like I didn't get it with my parents. Okay, but I think I get it with Adrian more just and kind of Melinda, whoever she is. Shout out to you, girl. I feel you too. <laughs> but she says. Uh, a separation from her husband attributes to this being missing my best friend talks in art. Excuse me. She attributes this to missing my best friend to talk with, but such a severe reaction would seem to go deeper than that. And I think it's more just relationship wise. Like hmm. when you're gone, I just feel like, oh, like I can be by myself. I'm very confident and, you know, independent and things like that. Like I don't need anyone, mm -hmm. but now that I've, let my walls down and, you know, things that I've never told anyone, you know, we have that type of connection, but I have it like a hundred times. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Deeper and different with and that's him. Like your life partner. Essentially. Yeah. And that so makes sense. I think that's where like separate separation anxiety comes in. I don't feel like he's going to abandon me because, you know, we're past that level of, you know, trust. And yeah. Everything. everything completely. But I think it's more just like that separate separation anxiety of just hopefully it's just, what it says here too is this may be manifested as separation anxiety mm -hmm. but is often mistaken for a strong attachment i don't know what's interesting about that is like because you mentioned like you and i have a certain bond that's mm -hmm. very different and what's so funny is that i feel like i see that from my side of when like when you feel like it's unusual that i haven't responded yeah. and you're like are you okay and i'm like yeah, I'm working. <laughs> I mean, it's not working at my job. Don't and don't let out my secrets. <laughs> I won't. That don't one worry. night was like, <laughs> my God, where is she? And so I think that's chill. like my mom instinct. Like, okay, I need to but check on really her. But that's really interesting because, like, I feel like I get that, you know, from this side of that, and like that's kind of what I perceived it as mm -hmm. to a certain extent, where it was like, I wasn't annoyed at all. It's just like, oh my God, she cares about me so much, and it was just yeah. like, it, it just clearly is just like that, like separation and just making sure that this that person is, is okay so interesting and that's so interesting like, and I, it's funny how i don't really have that with my parents but i call them all the time they call me if i find something out on the phone with them right away mm -hmm. and i don't think that i mean we have a great relationship and so i don't i don't know because like i don't think i necessarily like when i go on trips and stuff like i don't get homesick like that I was don't rarely the case like i always loved being on my own and yeah. i love traveling alone i love all of it it's no, just that's like, extreme. I can't travel alone. I think I would freak out. See, I think oh, that's where we're it. different. I think I'd freak <laughs> out like, what am I doing? Like, I don't have anyone to... I like, talk to myself and all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> Singing the plane, all that. But it's, yeah, it's all I good. I think that's but, where we're completely different. Like, right. I'm very independent, but I don't want to say, like, I, I depend on someone because I don't. But there's nothing wrong with that either. I, I know, but I don't think I do. I mean, it's kind of... I, I think mean, Adrian it's like would disagree, said. but... <laughs> I don't think I do. I was going to say, I know how often he brings you uh, biscuits and gravy on yes. Sundays. So, I mean. Oh, my gosh. No one's bringing me brunch. Now so I really whatever. want biscuits and gravy. Okay. Well, I can't help you there. <laughs> it is Thursday night at 8 o'clock. I cannot find you biscuits and gravy right now. I thought you could. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyway, this anyway. is getting off topic. Yeah, but, but still, I just think that's very it is really interesting that we have those differences. Although, and I mean, I guess I could ask my parents as far as what it was like when I was a kid because. Although I guess I don't know, I like babysitters, as... for instance, like we always had yeah. like college students that were my dad's students or whatever, and so like we always had a good time. And it was I was with my sister, yeah. So it wasn't like I was alone. I but... didn't feel that way at all with my family or anyone like that. I think it's more just I care so deeply. Like once I've let my walls down, I think with you and with Adrian, yeah, um, that's fair. I I get that a little bit. I get that. So that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Um. Going into the psychosomatic response to loss, there is just kind of discussing the, um, okay, so basically kind of just like, I don't know, your body's response to everything. One thing that I also noted here was uh, they can respond to the danger by either fighting or fleeing, and they may experience that fear as either free-floating anxiety in which the gastric activity works over time. So that's, again, relating to, like, yes. stomach aches or, like, anxiety related to that. Uh, the resulting pain or illness is different than hypochondria in which the symptoms are imagined. These illnesses are real, but the cause is psychological rather than organic. Absolutely. For me, that... I remember the first time I read that. Yeah. You know, it was seriously just so... And was this before... <sighs> it was such a relief. Everything happened. No, this it. was in probably in May when I read this. Okay. Um, and I mean, again, we'll go into this in an episode where we can talk about health and mental health and all that with adoption and stuff. I have been known to have a lot of just like random things come up that are not related to each other. Yeah. And this honestly was just so reaffirming to me just being like, I am not a hypocrite. Because yeah. it's happening. <laughs> it's just the fact that it's sourced from somewhere else. Yes. And that's been really hard for me to figure out. And the fact that sometimes these things are sourced with a uh, genetic situation. Yeah. Some of them are not. Some of them are a mix of the two. And it just kind of, I think for me at least, it creates a lot of resentment. Oh, when for it sure. comes to that kind of stuff, it's just like, it's really complicated. Yeah. So there's just like a lot of that there. Um, The rest of the chapter... Let's see here. There was one other section, the death of the psyche. Yes. Um, for me, this section was just... This it, whole chapter is really deep. Yeah. Honestly. There's a lot to this chapter because it's yeah. talking about your body. It's talking about your mind. It's talking about yeah. ah, all these things that are just... It's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Um, and I think the part where the section that you're going into is really important and very common. Mm hmm. But it's, again, something that people don't talk about. No. And I think it's, I mean, there's a lot more coming out as far as just the um, adoptee community being more active in social media. And yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's maybe it's just because we're joining it and we know that all these sure. things exist. It's very <laughs> possible that way. But it's also like we're creating this space and we're creating this voice and being like, hey, we're a huge community. We're everywhere. Yeah. You all know someone. Absolutely. And even if you don't, you still re can relate to what we're talking about. Well, and that's the thing is like, because there's everything, every type of, I've said this before, when it's come down to when we've discussed if adoption should be abolished, essentially. Yeah. And I, again, I don't really agree with that because I just don't think it's practical. It's like, there's so many other things that would have to be rid of yeah. for that to happen. So many of these things, like mental illness in general, things that relate to addiction or things like that, they're not going to go away. So in this particular section, just discussing the suicide ideation of adoption and everything, I know we've kind of touched on that a little bit. Just the fact that it's a little bit different in mental health for adoptees. Um, basically, this quote just like mentioned here is that suicide is an attempt on the part of the person in pain to actualize something which is to have already happened but that they can't remember experiencing so it's almost kind of trying to match that like sorrow or grief i guess yeah. i don't really know how else to describe it it's kind of trying to match that energy to a certain extent and just be like i feel like myself the psyche i guess is how they describe it dies along with the bond I don't know. It's so weird. It's like trying to put this into like making sense and everything. And it's just like, there's so much to it. Um, 
And then there's another element of like that the it, and kind of going back to that is that the person died in infancy, for which the infant has the meaning of annihilation can prevent the actual suicide attempt. I don't know. There's just like there's so much to this, and if a person becomes so inundated by the feelings that he is out of touch with the adult intellectual side of him, tragedy can happen. And I think I read that line. I'm going to read it again because I don't think I verbalize it very well. If a person becomes so inundated by the feelings that he is out of touch with the adult intellectual side of himself, tragedy can happen. And I read this, I think, about ten times. I was like, what? Like, that's... It almost kind of just put it very simply, and I was like, I'm not ready for this. Like, I know. It's very... This section is so... <sighs> deep breaths, everyone! Yes. <laughs> like, it, It's just, <sighs> again, so deep. And I think... It's kind of just like separating, yet relating, the normal like mental illness or mental health issues out there and giving them their own little branch off of just being like okay well this is the adoptee version of it because i think that there's a lot to that when it comes to just about everything is like with everything that we feel it's just feels so much more complicated and i've said this before where i just wonder what it's like to feel so much simpler and yeah you know that's kind of what i think about um yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, there's so much to that, and I think there's just, like, a lot that's discussed in this section, especially just relating to, you know, feeling suicidal and stuff. Yeah. And that's just a lot to carry and everything. And, like, they also mention in the section about birth mothers feeling suicidal, yeah. which it feeling similar feelings of desperation and that they are... Physiologically, emotionally, and spiritually ready to welcome into the world and bond with their babies, but never have the chance to do so. Like, that's, I would love uh, to speak to a birth mother. I know. Seriously, like, I think that is. It's a whole different section. It's a whole different. Yeah, there's world of feelings and decisions, things like that. It's just it's hard on all aspects of this triad. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's just a lot to really, like, I don't know, just honor and, I don't know, hold true to yourself and just, like, again, just, like, really honoring that. And I think that's, like, what we really want to be doing. For sure. Um, The summary of this chapter kind of goes into just, I don't know, the fact that the loss of this is manifested in sadness and depression and everything. But... So, again, there's just, like, a lot to this chapter to go into. Um, as far as the chapter itself, how did this make oh, you feel particularly? Again? Okay. <laughs> as far as this chapter goes for you, how did this particularly make you feel reading this a second time? I think this chapter, again, compared to the chapters prior, was a little bit harder to wrap my head around. Um, just to feel that, you know, pure validation makes you feel, like, uplifted. This is more like... You know, chapter three, it was like, I have things to work on. Now, chapter four. It's, yeah. Oh, chapter chapter four. Four. Yeah, yeah. Chapter four is like. But what do I do with this information? Yeah. And yeah. How do I, how do I process all the loss and grieve, you know, the grief that I've gone through and will go through? You know, it's just, how do I continue to cope with this? It, 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 I don't know. It made me feel a little bit like. <laughs> Discouraged a little yeah, bit? No, just like. Yeah. I, there's no words. It just felt different in that regard. I feel like it's a good, I mean, just with how we're planning these out, it's a good spot for a pause, I think. Yeah. I wouldn't say discouraged. Sorry, I was kind of going back to what you were saying. I was just just trying to really think of, like, what would a word be, but I can't think of And I guess I don't even know if I would use discouraged. It's more so just, again, it's not necessarily super thought-provoking and action-inducing where I'm, like, going to do something about it. That's, I think, for me, is the difference, is the fact that there's nothing that I'm like, I'm going to do this. Although I will say, when I was reading this, and I didn't write this down, I wasn't going to say this, but I had to say it, like, because for me, this made me feel 
The concept of mourning the loss is potentially insanely powerful. Yes. But it's also an insanely scary realm to step into and to actually act on. And thinking about, like, taking that time and that space to do that is potentially really sad and difficult and scary and just actualizing just, I don't know. And I actually, I can't remember where I was going to write this down because I didn't know how to verbalize it. But right now as we're talking about it and just the fact that we feel so, like, not indifferent. We're obviously not indifferent about it. But we're very, like, what do we do with this information? Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this now. Um... There was a part just discussing the loss and the mourning and everything. And I was like, do I do a personal, like, almost a funeral for this? Like, is that some some type of action? I don't know. I guess it's just like my brain is taking these actions of feelings and working on myself and everything. And just being like, I feel like everything should come with an action. Yeah, you do. Yeah, it, it should, and I think that's, like, where my brain can, like, reason yeah. reason with it and just be like, okay, so I guess I'll do this activity. <laughs> like, and it just feels so backwards. But it's, like, there was a part of me reading this being like, do I plan a funeral? Like, do I do this funeral for my self? I don't know what to, like, what do I do? Yeah. It was just, like, this really weird element of, like, panic, but also, like, planning mode. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know me. I'm just like, plan everything. Like, do yeah. all the things. And it was just, like... I don't know what to do with that. Besides, yeah, I just felt stuck. Yeah. I feel like for me, it was just like a lot of being, it's very floaty and just yeah. kind of like, okay, guess I'll let this chapter marinate yeah. in my brain and hope for the best. Like, I don't yeah. know what else to do with that besides that. And I guess in some ways, I mean, this, this book is, uh, let me take a look at the... Okay, so it's basically different. There's sections of each chapter. So there's chapters, of course. Um, but then there's also different parts. So there's one, two, three, four parts of the book. We have now completed part one. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that this is a good way to end part one. Um, just with the way that they are, you know, putting this out. Uh, part two is being more about the manifestations, just like, and a lot of this is stuff that we've kind of touched on. There's a lot more about like building relationships further, you know, in your life, issues of rejection, trust, intimacy, loyalty, love, trust, blah, 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 like core issues, abandonment, loss. So it's a lot more of like going into the details of what we discussed already. Um, but man, this is a heavy one to end on. (laughs) In part one, it's just like, okay, we need some time to digest, I guess. For sure. And I guess kind of to end it, you know, that's how we feel about it. It's it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And we said it time and time again, take your time during this, you know, section. Absolutely. We have taken weeks in between each chapter yeah. to really think it through, feel it, kind of. Give ourselves some time yeah. and talk about it just personally before we even put Absolutely. together things for these episodes as well. Which is really important for both of us. For sure. So I guess ending on this, um, we have our couple of questions that we like to have, you know, for us to talk about and also for you guys to comment on and discuss with us um, on our posts. So do you think you've processed the loss slash, you know, like, or grief? And if so, how have you done so? Hmm. We're getting deep in here. I honestly don't know that I have I think I've thought about it it's been like little twinkles in my brain (laughs) like just as growing up as like certain elements and like I've said this to you before um when I was growing up I would have like moments with my my adoptive mom and and I still do this probably like once a year less so now because it's more of constant conversation which I think is better but I used to like cry like sob over it probably about once a year and just really Hurt. Only once a year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I just like I know there was always just like I it was kind of one of those things where, like this is the night like it would yeah. be kind of like that but then there would be other times like my birthday when I would just be like numb and I wouldn't really cry yeah. it would just be like I feel nothing and I would just like <laughs> withdraw from my friends 
It would be different kinds of emotions, but there would always be, like, just, I mean, honestly, the night after you and I discovered we're from the same place that I told you, that was a night I binge-watched a bunch of really sad adoption documentaries <laughs> and bawled my eyes out for, like, four hours straight. I was very dehydrated and very congested <laughs> the next day. So it's, like, <laughs> stuff and like that. for me, that. like, that, I was just, like, I, I think it didn't hit me until a couple days later. I was just, like, wait, who are you? you yeah, know, like, are it was we just, like, wait a minute, are we, like, porn parts I don't like. Yes. Like, it was just, it was groundbreaking. I don't even know. But, I don't know, I guess when it comes to that, it's, like, I don't know that that's necessarily something I've done. I think it's something I can call my therapist and be like, how does one do this? Like, yeah. again, it's just like mourning that loss and it's kind of considering the fact that how do infants normally gr- like process grief? Yeah. I don't know. Is that even a thing? I don't know. Like, and I guess, I don't know. It's complicated. Um, this chapter obviously goes more into like, it manifesting as depression and anxiety. So, I mean, it's kind of just questioning also if you can be linked to this yeah. identity and grief. Granted, there's no way to know. There's right. not like you can plug in something and be like, oh, what does this test say? Where does this you come know? from? Yeah. yeah. There's no you, way to know. Do you personally think that's kind of where it comes from? I mean, I the older I get and the more that I get grounded with that, yes. And, again, that's, again, it just comes back more to working on, like, chapter three, I had said, I want to work on more with myself and work on more, as far as this goes, yeah. to be more settled in this and yes. not have these huge highs and lows and not feel these certain ways. So, I think, for me, that's kind of where it comes from. That's as much as, I guess, I can pinpoint. What about you? So, I think, for me... I feel like I process the stages of grief, but not the loss, if that makes sense. If that's even possible. Like, that's the only way I can put it. Wait, can you say that again? So I've processed the stages of grief, but not the loss. Okay. Interesting. So I've understood, you know, I've understood and, you know, kind of gone through the different stages of like, oh, I was super angry that, mm, you know, she let, okay. me, she let me go and... Super upset that she missed all these parts of my life, all these different milestones. And then I was sad that she did. And then I was sad because I was like, wait, she's a woman. She, fe- You know, the older I get, like, she feels these feelings too. She had to make this decision. Yeah. Could you imagine what that would be like? Mm-mm. I'm feeling these type of things. But then it makes me feel like, oh, but you have felt this. You, you know. It- so I go back and forth. I feel like I have definitely gone through the processes of grief and the different stages of that but I always feel like the loss will be there and I think with what you've said I have moments where I'm just like there's no words to it you just want to cry it out yeah and you don't know why but I think it's that loss piece of like man here's another thing you're missing or another thing you Mm -hmm. don't know about me or I don't know about you and Another thing that I I think I just leave room for more loss because I know in my lifetime I will lose two moms. Because mm. I know both of them. Yeah. So it's like I I can't close that chapter. I can't fully get over the loss. Yeah. Until she passes. Happens. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know, even at that point, will will I be even more upset at that point? Where it's like, I yeah. wish I would have done more. I wish I would have done that, you know? So I think I'm still going through the process of loss. And I think that will continue to go with me. Yeah. Grief, I think, will come in those different stages of when things happen. Mm-hmm. But overall, grief of adoption, I think I've, I've overcome that. Interesting. So that's very interesting. And I, I also go with depression, anxiety. I've had... Tons of issues, and I, I guess we'll dive deeper into that when mm-hmm. we go into that, hopefully in May, yep. for mental health awareness. Yeah. Um, but I do think my depression was stemmed from adoption, mm-hmm. 100%. I was going through it deeply when I was a teenager, and it's funny how not a, a single friend of mine knew. You know, like, mm. they couldn't see it. I, I put a great face on, but mm. I was definitely unsure of who I was or what I wanted. You know, I just wanted to be around people to... Hide. Fill something. Yeah. 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 But I didn't 
I didn't trust these people. I didn't want to, you know, I give them my life, whatever, you know. Yeah. But it just, it was never serious. I just needed something to Almost help distract, me. probably, a yeah, little bit. I mean, because I get that, for sure. Yeah. And so that's why the moment I turned 18, I was like, I have to go find my birth mom. Dang. Oh, my God. I know. So those years were rough. I don't think my anxiety is really necessarily linked through adoption. I think I just like things to be a certain mm-hmm. way. And I just, you know, I'm I'm like a mom instinct where I'm just like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. Are you okay? How, how, you know, yeah. do I need to get this? So I think that's just more of my personality mm-hmm. more than adoption. That's really interesting. That's, yeah. There's. I know. I said a lot there. No, I know. Was, I, I, I love the fact like, that like, we can yeah. talk more about mental health and just everything going forward. Because that'll be a big episode to us, like unload all of this and just, just talk. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if we want to necessarily have, like, besides to start us off some guidelines, like, just yeah. to get us. And I think I've touched on it quite often, but you have a lot to really put out there mm-hmm. that you have struggled with and are still working through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you would ask the question um, for another discussion question. Would you ever want to try the regressive hypnosis to re-experience your birth and adoption? Because there is a section in the defending against further loss. Um, and we knew someone in our synchronicity yes. episodes who did, I think, EMDR for this, which I've done EMDR in the past. Not for this pr- specifically. But it's basically, like, if anybody knows what EMDR, it's basically just, like, this very technical, you know, element behind uh, psychology and everything. And just, re- like, connecting your different sides of the brain. And basically this dives into, like, the very primal i don't even know how else to describe it like versions of what's going on it's like using hypnosis to remember how you feel essentially yeah. so the question here is would you ever try that so question here I zinging think... over to you first <laughs> what do you think i think i would try it i would be a little timid just to i i guess i'm not scared to know what i feel because i felt what i felt if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, like, as a baby, I don't know what I felt at that point. I don't know what that would look like. So I think I'd be a little scared to see what would be brought up with it mm-hmm. and how how I'd be able to cope with that. But at the same time, I feel like I'm at a very great place in my journey, um, you know, with the podcast, with just being an adoptee in general, mm-hmm. where I think I could handle that. Interesting. See, I, I've thought about this a little bit just since our synchronicity episode yeah. and also reading this. I definitely, I think I would. I would probably take a week off work afterwards uh, <laughs> just to kind of give myself that time to, like, feel it heal and all that kind of stuff. Just because I think this kind of ties more into the fact that I want to do this. And I feel like I am doing this on my own and I'm, like liking doing that on and my that's own that's for yourself again yeah. you know that's your and way of like understanding the support around me like i have a great therapist i, I have a great huge. relationship with my parents i have you huge. i have this i have so many things that are surrounding me that are like if i did this and i took the time and i didn't just like do it on a random wednesday yeah. when i had to work the next few days and like just dive into my regular life if i gave myself that time and made sure that i wasn't going to just like do it randomly on, I don't know, just on a random day. I think it takes different sessions too, right? Oh gosh, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. know. I honestly don't know. We have to look more into that. That's something I want to ask someone about yeah. because I think that would be very interesting. It'd be really interesting to hear from someone who's done this. But I think so. the support aspect of what you were saying is huge on anything. Birth search, you know. Everything. Just growing and going through the fog. Every Everything. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that through someone part of your family that you don't feel comfortable with yeah we are here for you i mean i've said this over and over but we truly are and sometimes it's easier to speak to a random stranger stranger. yeah absolutely but you know we understand you more than you think we do and we've noticed that between each other so reach out anytime we love your messages and comments and we want to be that support for you because i think at certain times we wish we had that support Absolutely. And I mean, I think this is us just being able to take everything and present it in a way that's easily digestible and everything and just be able to talk about these things and present it so that it also helps future adoptees and future adoptive parents, because that's really what I think, again, 
you are a hopeful adoptive parent, read this book. <laughs> read this book. Follow along with actual adoptees that yes. have grown up. Because I've said this time and time again. I will not stop saying this. Is that adoptees are not just this baby that gets to be part of this cute, yes. you know, photo op. You know, we all know how <laughs> social media is these days. It's the same thing with all these gender reveals and nonsense. It's like, welcome home, baby. It's like, great. Get them a f- great therapist when they're a teenager. Like, you don't for- they yeah. forget that, like, they grow up. They have to function as humans, human adults like us. So just yeah. go with that. Think about that when you are adopting. Think about your child as a 20-something like we are. That's how people should be thinking about this. So go into it that way. Um, Again, this is the end of part one of The Primal Wound. So (sighs) we'll be diving into part two uh, shortly here. So um, be sure to, if you don't have a copy again, go to our website, ColumbianInfluence.com, C-O-L-O-M-B-I-N. Or wait, influence I have? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then, of course, with our discussion questions and everything, those will be posted intermittently after yes. each episode. So we can do that. And then they will also be, there will be a published uh, resource essentially for the entire book eventually on our uh, Etsy shop as well. So make sure that th- that'll be a downloadable regardless of whether you are a parent, part of a group, or part of a, you know, some type of psychology related office or or anything like that so that'll be a resource for everybody so please be sure to check that out um as always like subscribe share comment what are all the other (laughs) verbs you can use on social media (laughs) check out our youtube subscribe to our youtube and our podcast like don't just do one or the other do both do them both because leave us a review yes please leave us all the reviews (laughs) um and of course this will be intertwined with our ordinary content with I don't want to say ordinary or extraordinary content Uh, (laughs) with interviews and other conversations between us two. So uh, be sure to check us out uh, further and uh, we will be back next time for diving in more into the primal wound and be sure to also send us any suggestions that you have as far as other books that we should read until next time. Later.